Navigation for bikepack trips is super important, and while it can be fun to get lost sometimes, personally I generally prefer to be following a route. In this video, we're going to be comparing using a smartphone like this with a GPS computer such as a Garmin Edge 820, like this one, and seeing the benefits and drawbacks with each one. On my first long distance bike packing trip, um, cycling down through Europe, I had a whole pannier filled with paper maps and it literally just weighed a ton. I do still enjoy using paper maps, especially for planning local trips and for hiking, but using a smartphone or GPS computer such as a Garmin or Wahoo is much more convenient for bike packing trips and you'll probably spend more time enjoying the trip and less time getting lost or not knowing where you are. So I currently have a Google Pixel 4a um, which I really like as it's cheaper than most high-end phones and has a great camera. Um, the battery isn't the best though. Um, and then I've got a Garmin Edge 820 which it isn't the newest Garmin model um, but it does the job quite well. I'm going to be splitting this video into four sections um, covering mapping functions, ease of use, ruggedness and then finally cost. In terms of bike computers you obviously have to have one which has mapping and navigation uh, functions. Um, some might come with preloaded maps of your country or of the world, depending on the device storage. Some of them have quite limited maps and storage space. Um, I used to have a Garmin Edge uh, 520, which did have maps as a sort of like breadcrumb trail, um, but only for a small area. And so it was useful for sort of day trips, but yeah, nothing sort of like multi-day or going through different countries. This Garmin Edge 820 um, allows for much sort of wider map coverage. Um, I think it has most of Europe on, um, but you can also add, add more countries as well. Um, you can make routes on the Garmin itself, but it's pretty small screen as you can see, and it's pretty clunky and it's not very user friendly. It's much easier to make the routes on sites such as the Garmin Connect or a specific route planning app such as Commute. You can plan routes on your phone or laptop, and then send them to your uh, device via Bluetooth. Once it's on your device, you can see the route, move around the map, and then start following your route. On my phone, I mainly use Commute for navigation. It offers worldwide mapping, uh, great routing tools, and offline uh, functionality. Both the planning and the navigation can be done on the phone, so it's quite simple to use. Phones generally have more mapping functions compared to uh, bike computers, including the ability to sort of easily zoom around, uh, and zoom in and out, um, change the map styles into sort of say satellite and edit routes on the go as well. When you're following a clear defined route and mostly sticking to sort of larger roads and maybe sort of single day trips or sort of like small short trips, using a bike computer can be really good and quite simple to follow. On most of my trips so far I've used my Garmin and it has worked fairly well. However more recently I've been finding that using my phone is actually much easier to use. This is because it has a larger screen, so it's easier to sort of like just glance down and see the directions. And it's also much easier to quickly update the route if you want. Um, this could be to sort of make a small detour, or if you come to a road which isn't passable, like it's got roadworks on. One really annoying thing that I find on my Garmin is that I can't update my route if it's partway through a ride. Um, so in order to change the route, I have to stop the ride download a new route for my phone and then start another ride which can just be a bit frustrating and take up a bit more time than it should. Using my phone is also easier if I'm on small lanes or in a big city or I'm lost as it's easier to sort of quickly change the satellite view, zoom in and scroll around the map to see where I am and where I should be going. There's also one less device that you need to take with you if you just use your phone. It could be used as well, well a phone obviously. Um, a camera and for navigation. This means that there's one less thing to charge at the end of the day. Um, however, using a phone for navigation does massively eat up your battery. Uh, my Garmin would normally last me the whole day um, navigating without needing to sort of top it up during the day. But my phone definitely wouldn't and it almost just needs to be plugged in the whole ride. So I currently use a battery pack for this, um, but I would love to get a dynamo so then I just know that I've always got battery as long as I'm riding then I'll have enough battery to charge my phone and things. When it comes to ruggedness, the bike computer normally wins compared to a phone. 
Um, it's just designed to be out in, on the bike in all elements really. So it's quite hardy being able to withstand knocks and falls um, quite well. Um, so it's, and it's also quite sturdy as well, so when you attach it to the bike, there's not really much chance of it coming off. And this is sort of compared to most phones not really being designed to be used for bikepacking, navigation, and aren't quite as rugged. Um, they have more sort of open ports, which can allow the dust in. And of course, most phones don't cope quite so well in the rain compared to bike computers. I normally use a waterproof case like this one, um, just because it keeps the dust out and it keeps the, the water and rain out. But it can be a bit harder to use when it is raining wet, um, especially when you're wearing gloves. Um, it just doesn't always pick up your fingers quite so well if there's that sort of condensation between the screen and the, and the plastic. So, but it, but it is, yeah, it normally keeps the sort of the water and dust out quite well. Even though I said earlier that it is easier with just one device for things like charging, um, it does mean that you don't have any backup. It means you're completely reliant on your phone, which if it packs up or just suddenly dies, then you don't have anything else to fall back on. I haven't really had this happen to me, um, but it's something to keep in mind. Um, actually, if anything, it's been more my, my Garmin that's sort of suddenly stopped, stopped working and then I've had to use my phone instead. But it is quite good to have a backup, especially if it's a, quite a long trip. And yeah, just good that if something does go wrong, then you've always got something to fall back on. So finally, cost. Um, using a phone for navigation is, well, it's essentially free, assuming you've already got a suitable for smartphone, which I'm sure you have. And there's sort of plenty of free navigation apps, but you might want to pay for something for sort of specific bikepacking and cycling. Like I said, I mostly use Commute, which I think has a one-off fee for around £30. Um, and then there's a pro version as well with, with a small monthly fee on top of that which you get extra features for. I guess you might also have the cost of a phone mount and a sort of waterproof case and then some kind of dynamo or battery pack to keep your phone charged. For a bike computer with navigation this could sort of range from anything from 150 to 200 pounds up to four or 500 pounds depending on the model and what features it has. So I think both using a smartphone and a bike computer are great ways of navigating on bikepacking trips. Personally, I'm finding my phone is much more capable of being the main device that I use for navigation. I love just how simple and clear it is, and it's much easier to add new waypoints and adjust the route on the road whilst I'm cycling. The main drawback for me is the battery, which yeah isn't always great, but if you put it on battery saver um, mode and aeroplane mode and lower the brightness right down, it does normally last a bit longer. I do still use my Garmin, but much less now, and mainly for shorter uh, bikepacking trips or just day trips and really just as sort of a, a backup device now. I'd love to hear your thoughts though as personally I've changed how I navigate over the years and yeah it'd be interesting to hear what other people use and yeah whether they prefer a smartphone or, or a dedicated bike computer. Yeah so let me know in the comments below.